Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about Gauss's Law. In specific, in this section, what we're going to do is work some uh, of the more basic, I guess you would say, problems related to Gauss's Law to kind of solidify how we use it, what it's used for, and so that you can get some practice with that. That's what we're going to do in this section. We're going to cover some sort of, uh, of the more elementary ones that you would see on your exam. In the subsequent sections, what I've done is I've split uh, let me back up a second. There are tons of types of problems that you would use Gauss's Law for. And instead of lumping them all, all of the different problem types, into one section and have you sift through them to, to sort of study the solution methods, what I've done is in this section we're covering some of the more basic ones. And then uh, in the other sections, and probably the next two or three sections, you will have also Gauss's Law, but they'll be applied to very specific kinds of problems that you can kind of lump into certain categories. So in the next section we might have cylindrical symmetry. Maybe then we'll have spherical symmetry and so on because symmetry, as we've talked about, is really important in Gauss's Law. In this particular problem, there's no specific kind of symmetry in the problem. So that's why I've lumped these together into this section here. Uh, what you've got generally in this section is a bunch of point charges and applying Gauss's Law to point charges so you can get some practice with that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, draw a collection for our first problem. I'm going to draw a collection of point charges on the board, and then we'll read the problem and talk about what we're going to do. What we're going to have is uh, four point charges for this problem. This one is 2Q. Uh, this one is a positive charge of Q. This one is a charge of, it's a negative charge, so I have a negative sign in there, and it's negative 2Q. And this one over here is a negative Q. All right, so we have four charges. Two of them are positive, two of them are negative, and the values are obviously all different. So you have positive charges up here, negative charges up here. I don't know what the value of Q is at all, and I'm not going to give it to you in this problem because it doesn't matter. You have to kind of get used to that in physics. A lot of times you're not going to have numbers. Um, you know, given for everything, you'll have to derive the answer in terms of some variable because in real life you're usually doing that. So. With this diagram in mind, with these four charges, by the way, these four charges are arranged sort of in a square like that. The question goes like this. What Gaussian surface encloses at least the charge 2Q, at least the charge positive 2Q, uh, and uh, through which the net electric flux, uh, electric field flux is, and then I have three different things here. Uh, we're going to calculate when the flux is zero, we're going to calculate when the flux is 3q over the permittivity, and we're going to calculate when the flux is negative 2q over the permittivity. So basically, you have some charges here. You know that there's an electric field here, right? There's always an electric field uh, when you have electric charges. So I'm not going to draw the electric field. It's fairly complicated here, but you know you're going to have field lines coming out of this positive charge, out of this positive charge, and into this negative charge here and into this negative charge here. Now, because the values of the charges are different, then this field, uh, if you were to draw it, would look kind of complicated because the field is stronger here than it is here uh, in the positive sense, and it's stronger here in the negative sense than it is here. And obviously, the charges are absolute value-wise stronger over here than over here. So if it, it will be difficult to draw a nice symmetrical picture of the electric field here, but you could obviously put it in a computer and get a beautiful picture to see how that field goes. But you know you have an electric field here, so you know that you can draw a random Gaussian surface however you like, and then you could calculate the electric field flux flowing through that surface. Now remember, when the field flux is going out of a surface, outward, then the, uh, we say that the flux is positive, that's our sign convention. And when the, flux, uh, when the field is flowing into a surface, we say that that guy is negative, a negative electric field flux. So the question, uh, getting back to the chase, cutting to the chase here, what Gaussian surface encloses at least the charge 2Q? So whatever surface we pick, the problem is stating, we must include this charge. That's just because of the way the problem is worded. Uh, through which the net electric field flux is, and let's go for, for letter A here, uh, electric field flux is zero. So we need to remind ourselves what is the definition of the electric field flux. Now Gauss's law, Gauss's law in general, is the following. It's the permittivity times the surface integral of the electric field 
dotted with DA, where DA is, you know, we chop our surface up into little area elements, and DA is the vector pointing out from those elements, is equal to the included charge, right? Okay, so here's Gauss's law, right? Now, where is the electric field flux in here? Well, here, you know, when we're dotting E with the vector DA, that's the uh, field flux uh, through that surface area, that little differential surface area. And when we take the entire integral over the whole surface, this is what we're going to call the uh, total net flux through the whole surface, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to pick a surface in this case. We're picking a surface somewhere that includes this charge so that the net electric field flux through that surface is zero. Okay, is zero. So if that is the flux, let's go ahead and solve for the flux. So the flux, just to make it clear, uh, is equal to this circular integral E dot dA 